I have a great garden for you today. You are absolutely going to love this, especially if you are a maximalist. I've showed you minimalist gardens before, but this is a, a courtyard maximalist garden of my good friend, Janie Dupree. Janie, we have known each other for Long a time. long time. Um, Janie is a real hero and very wow. well known in the Oklahoma City community because of all of her work with Oklahoma City Beautiful, with the artists community, just out and about. She is truly a legend in Oklahoma City and thank you for your service because you have done so much for towards the beautification of Oklahoma City. We call them courtyard garden homes, I guess, that are in this area and you have this may be a small space, mm -hmm. but boy, has she optimized it, personalized it. It has so many signature touches, and I can't wait to show them to you. So let's get started. This is a perfect example of so many different things. You and I both share a, a real affection for gravel. <laughs> you don't have any grass at all. No your, grass at all. In your no. small garden. Okay, now this is this is to the side of her house, on the south side of your home. Am I right? You're right. Okay. This is just a really, typically at most homes, it's underused and it's ignored. But this is kind of like a pathway garden that has a gravel base. It's got all sorts of features. And you told me that your daughter says that this is actually her favorite, her favorite part, of, part the of the garden. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it just goes to show what you can do in a small space. So here are, here are just a number of the features that to me really stand out. The fact that it faces south means that this eastern red bud here creates absolutely gorgeous Good shadows shots. on the wall. And I just love that. Mm -hmm. And it fills kind of an empty brick facade. But this red bud has a story. This was a little seedling from the red bud classic. And when we brought it here three years ago, we'd had it in a pot, and it was probably about this tall. So in three years, it's, it's grown, grown this, this much. much. So for those of you that don't know, the Redbud Classic is an institution here in Oklahoma City. It is a foot race that everybody who's anybody and runs wants to be involved in. And they sell these, as a fundraiser, they sell these little Eastern Redbuds. And this, by the way, is the type of Redbud that I have that forms the canopy uh -huh. over, over my gravel deck in the back. Now, Tell me about this wonderful <laughs> grapevine here. The, the grapevine was here when we bought the place, but it was in a different location. So when we started redoing things, we picked it up and moved it to right here. And as you can tell, in the three years, it has grown completely around and oh Lord, covers up yeah. the whole wall. And it, and we it, have had grapes, and the birds seem to get them before we do. Well, that's okay, because we want to feed the, the birds, birds too. too. And I think it's just beautiful, the color of it this time of year will turn that vibrant gold. But, but you know what I like most about it? And that's the exposed architecture. Yes of the trunk itself. The other nice thing it does, a very unusual plant that provides you some privacy from the courtyard mm -hmm. home next door. So I love this. I bet it's gorgeous in the spring as all of the buds, the leaf buds oh, start yes. to it's erupt. Yes. We love this. It's because of the privacy that it gives us in this area, although we don't spend a lot of time down here. I kind of like to come sit in the sun yeah. in the winter time. Which, which speaks that she's got little seating areas back yeah. here. Again, something uncommon in an area that most people don't exploit in their homes, but that is so important in a courtyard garden that is small from the beginning. So how, how much space do you think you have here? Oh my goodness, I have no idea. It's probably 50 feet, 50 yards long here. Okay. 
Maybe half a football field and, and is this length. Okay, and the footprint of your home, you said, is about 1,800? 18, 18, 18, close to 1,900. 1,900 square feet. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's go. Stuart's wanting us to move along. And by the way, <laughs> we've also got Matt here, and who's helping us film, and also Bill, her husband, who is just puttering and doing, and doing things, making it look that much better for us. So over here, you've got a, a little herb garden. Yes, yes. And you, it looks like you've got some mint, you've got basil, which is still going strong here. And then because everybody has to have a garden gnome, you, That's have, right, the you gnome. have a garden gnome. She's got some chives here. Uh, because as I said, you definitely are a maximalist. Yes. <laughs> but you could do this, you could create something equally as beautiful in a more minimalistic, yes. zen kind of way if that was your style, but definitely, this is so you. So is this a crepe myrtle here? No, no I'm not now, sure exactly this? what this is. It it just seems to grow and grow and grow, and we keep it. Yeah. Okay. So it's our question of the day. What is this? That's the Stewart question of the day. A Stewart <laughs> question of the day, and my question of the day would be: How many of you out there you garden in all different sizes of spaces? How many of you out there garden in a courtyard type? type garden. You've got a pruned up, you exposed holly. a pruned up holly here. I'm to get a good shot here so Can I you get a good shot? Okay. Believe. How are they going to tell us if they can't see Well, it? I don't know, Stuart. Where am I going? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, you're going to show over here. Look at how beautifully. Is this a Nellie? No, oh, I think wow. it's just a Burford holly. Just a, wow, it's got big leaves uh -huh. from Burford, and they have taken a rather, this is what I ca like to call romancing the ordinary. When you take something that is relatively common but very mature and you transform it into something really special, the way you have limbed it up so beautifully. And here's... And then here is one of four. Four seasons, four and seasons. this is winter. Oh and she gosh. just nestles in here. And we just let this grow around her. And then, of course, in the summertime, we have the yuccas blooming. And, oh, my gosh, this uh, this is such a New Mexican kind of plant, <laughs> isn't it? It's everywhere in Colorado and in Santa Fe. And I just love the sense of it. This is Russian sage, or is it what's... Per Petrovs Petrovskia, I believe. Well, and we've just... And we've cut it way back a couple of times this summer. And yeah. this last cutback, we just let it grow on right. And look at it, and it's beautifully, great pollinator plant. One thing about this plant, as, as a tip, you don't want to cut it all the way back going into winter because it really needs to have some of the stem and the leaves to kind of protect the crown of the plant okay. going into winter. But whack at it as much as you like in the summer and obviously to great effect as she's done here. Now, along this, along this beautiful wrought iron gate that you have in closing your property, I see you've got some hog wire here that is doing a couple of things. It is supporting climbers that you have. Is this, what is this? Carolina Jasmine. Carolina ga Jasmine. And, but it's also probably keeping some creatures out? Hopes, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. hopefully. Hopefully, maybe some munching rabbits. And then over here, she's just tucked, which look, looks very nice, I have to say. Yes, for shed. A, yeah, a storage shed over here. And, and you can keep- A plastic shed. Just a plastic <laughs> shed, but it works. It blends in very much so with the facade of your house. She's got it secured here with some, with some metal brackets, Stuart. That's a great tip. She's probably gonna install your furniture. Yeah, probably outside, um, unless you wanna move it around. Oh, it's, but and oh my gosh, she's Jasmine. Carolina has been Jasmine, blooming, yes, it's blooming. Now, do you want me to tell you a heartache? What? I had this growing up, probably sixty feet into the air, that I started on a neighbor's tree, and it was all it all died back oh. in that February oh. minus fifteen blast. Oh, so it can be pretty rambunctious. So we need to mulch it. So you need to mulch really it. Mulch Though normally, it. normally not a problem. I haven't uh -huh. done anything to it in probably 30 years. Very practical, very attractive pattern of putting flagstone in gravel. I love this look. I love the crunch of the gravel when you walk on it. Gets really good drainage. And you don't have to worry over here about weed eating. Mm -hmm. You don't have to mow. You don't have to do anything. And if you've got little ones that visit your garden, what a 
fun little private secret space, place. secret place for them to come. And, ooh, what kind of grass is this? Well, you know, Roger asked me what this is. It was just something that was the prettiest color. It's a blue-gray, and I just picked it up at Lowe's, and it fills this empty, you know, an empty space, gives us a little bit more privacy from our neighbor. And great autumn interest. Yes. Two. Yes, question two, if anybody knows what this is. Like a blue stem, it almost looks like something that would be native to the prairie. Might be hard to identify in its dried state. Stuart, get ready because I really want everybody to see the entire length of this courtyard garden because it is pretty spectacular. Janie, I'm going to go up here, but you just stay put because I want to get out of the way so Stuart can show how much stuff you have very beautifully crammed. <laughs> Crammed. Crammed. Stuff. Into, yes, crammed into this courtyard garden. Because you like a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And you have been able to, I think, scratch that itch and really squeeze a lot into this small space. First, before I do, Stuart, can we concentrate on this area here? So this corner has, has really been transformed recently because of that cold blast. You've had these three, or these little gem magnolias yes. in this yes. corner that gave you lots of privacy, great visual weight in this corner and made it very intimate. And then in that terrible freeze, you lost, or you thought, thought, thought you lost this middle one. See how much shorter it is? than the others. You thought you lost it, but you did some trimming on it. Lo and behold, this is a case where you were rewarded for your patience. It came back. It came back. I'll be much shorter. <laughs> I'll be at much shorter. Still alive. Still, Still alive. alive. And very much alive because look, look at the buds on this one. Right. Now you did, you did a, a pineapple basket turnover yes. because this one was taller. Uh-huh. And you, you switched positions. Is that what this you did? This one was pre was already here when we oh, bought okay. the place, it, but it was down ground level. And John Fluitt's crew picked it up and, and moved, moved it, it up here. here. Oh, now, tell me that again with me shooting a little wide. Okay. The, this one here existed when they bought the property, but it was ground here. level. It was ground, ground level, level here. here. So they built up this bed with a flagstone wall, which elevated it. To in, here. Yes, beautifying it, increasing its stature, making it look more mature than it even is. And then you added two more yes. little gem magnolias as a backdrop here. And this one, after they moved it, it had a hard time. It was very skimpy. Uh huh. So last spring, we really cut it back severely and cut this one back severely. And you can see there's almost two feet of growth on that. Yeah, that's, so and that's this a, one has really filled Okay, out. a great takeaway tip. If something seems to be struggling, cut it back okay. and at the appropriate time of year, feed it. And then you have enough in the foreground and underneath the canopy of that magnolia to have season that is number summer. two. That is summer, hiding back and it's as the- it's even hiding from you, Stuart. And as that magnolia fills out more, it'll be more enclosed. Yes. So it'll have very a much shady so. nook for the summer. But in the meantime, you've got some iris that you've got planted back there. You've got, that's a good southern living plant, sunshine lagustrum. Uh, and in the back layer, you've got a retaining wall that is also built up. So you've got three tiers of planting. You've got ground level, this midsection, which kind of invites you to come up and take a closer look at season, Cupid season number two. And then you've got behind the retaining wall, there's some Nandinas, looks like a columnar cypress. Yes. A columnar cypress here. By the way, that's another great tip. In small gardens, they're sometimes hard to find, but columnar varieties of some of our favorite trees are just wonderful 
to employ and press into use in these small spaces. And then you've got what looks like some, is that a blue star juniper? No, it's blue Pacific. Blue Pacific juniper coming down. You've got some salvia gregi up in here, some Indian hawthorn. Lamb's ear. Lamb's ear, you've got um, a yucca. Gold, a golden bowls yucca, I believe. And this here is a blue, a blue star. star. That's a blue star juniper. This is new to me, and I'm, it may be a new obsession of mine, and I may have to hunt it down. John will have to point us in the right direction. This, you guys, is a miniature Boston ivy, which is a miniature dwarf form of the Boston ivy that I've got growing on my studio in the back. But even in this area, she's got the flagstone path that courses through the garden tells the visitor where to go but then there's enough room for a floating garden bed island bed in here using the same flagstone but then as brill bill brilliantly pointed out two different things mm -hmm. and what were they and that somebody's the, calling Bill the right now. The hose extension? Yes. The hose extension is kind of a natural guide for the hose extension behind the bed, which camouflages the hose. But also, this is simply brilliant when they did this design. Gave enough clearance for you guys to be able to wash yeah. your windows. Wash our windows. And the drainage. Yes, and drainage. And walk behind here. But also... Thirdly, this gorgeous Hicks U, mm -hmm. you seldom in Oklahoma see them this large. This gorgeous Hicks U then has enough air circulation on the backside ah. so it doesn't get reflected heat off of the brick wall ah. and die on that backside. More of a hint of this blue gray with some blue fescue here. Some more blue gray creeping junipers. I just love that variety. I, what is that variety? Blue rug. Blue rug, that's right. And that's blue one rug. of the happiest blue rugs I've, I've ever yeah. seen because a lot of times it is not nearly it's that beautiful. Carpet, it? Yes, it, yes, Stuart. I like that. This little jellyfish. So tell us about this. Uh, well, this was another estate sale find and I brought it in the house and I hung it up and I never thought about it being a jellyfish and my, one of my daughters walked in and she went, you have a jellyfish? I want your jellyfish. And well, it's a winch, you know, it's a yes. winch line too. So what is this? I do not know. A friend gave it to us. She didn't care for it in her garden. And so Bill went over there and he dug it up and moved it here. Another moving place. I need a bill. <laughs> yes. I need a bill. Well, you have lots of things in here that are gifts from, yes. from People, others. Friends. Okay, now this is one of our favorite oh. red buds, isn't it? Tell us about yes, this. Yes, it's a rising sun red bud, and in the spring, it'll have chartreuse leaves, kind of a corally, real pale coral color, and um, then some yellow. It's very colorful, and you can see it from Pennsylvania. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Pennsylvania is one of the major thoroughfares that runs uh, just to the east yes. of us. Now, one thing about this, and, and one reason I would probably employ them more extensively at my next home rather than the eastern redbud, is this doesn't flower real heavily, which means no. it also doesn't get a lot of those nasty seed pods that, would, that do go everywhere yes. and can be kind of annoying. And, but the, the advantages of this are the fact that it's got beautiful, colorful leaves and foliage and it's it's really a four season plant and it's got a little bit more of a narrower profile that then comes up and turns into an umbrella form after it gets a little bit taller well, so i understand as it grows larger that our dynamics are going to change because we'll have more shade yes absolutely but but you can adapt so easily and that's another thing about a small garden it doesn't take that much to accommodate changing conditions and i love the fact that this wall gives an opportunity for cascading plants to really shine, mm -hmm. like that blue rug juniper and some of these succulents and really anything that, that also then softens the garden and really creates a, a lovely kind of romantic 
element, I think, an aged element, because you've not been here very no. long. No. And the fact that those things flow over the side makes it look instantly mature. The thing that, that I love about Sunshine Ligustrum, you can whack that back just like your Silverado <laughs> or the, your uh, Russian sage, you can whack that back in the summer and it comes back even more beautifully oh. with that char chartreuse color. And then uh, help me with some plant IDs, folks. I believe this is leopard's bane. Um, you and I were asking, we trying to think about it. it. I, I believe it's leopard's bane, but whatever it is, it's getting it's ready bloom. to bloom just beautifully. We had no idea that it would bloom. We just thought it was just some form of greenery to go in here. But the spots, <laughs> they're not sun spots. Now, Janie and Bill are friends after my own heart because they love to forage items in nature. <laughs> and so you will find elements of driftwood, beautiful stones. And this looks like some kind of carex, maybe Everillo, that's a southern living plant. And then we, we come to season number three. Are we on three? Uh -huh. This is three. This is a fall because it's the grape harvest. Love getting it. ready for for the wine season and did i ask you where you got these you know uh, they came as with the garden they, what else wow. can i say and then Ro the uh, now roger found <laughs> roger found roger the, our mutual friend found, it, the, found the missing one. season the, yes i kept trying to ask him to steal one from one of their other clients but, <laughs> but he didn't do that well yeah, this what kind of friend sale. is that what kind well, of friend is that be with just three seasons so you've got a wonderful two tour here that has both a nelly Mosier and an that's in bloom now and a henry eye that's not in bloom the white that's right it's in this it's in the spring but it's you know we've got more buds coming and we do have a photograph of this blooming in the snow Oh my With gosh, you're kidding. No. Oh, how fabulous. Well, the thing is, you can see that a lot of this stuff still is very much, you know, got some sunstroke from the horrific mm -hmm. summer that we had, but her garden looks amazing. It was very well tended during that, that heat spell, which is another virtue of a small garden. And then you've got, this is some kind of spirea. Uh -huh. What's it yes, called? Yes, I think it's a cut leaf. I love this. I think it's a cut leaf, and actually, in the spring, it's a lot paler color too, more of a chartreuse, but it's darkened as we've come into the fall. And then I love the blue green, and this looks like yeah. some kind of panacea. Do you know what that is? It's some kind of pine tree, and you know when you can find them. Here's another tip, you guys: you can find these in places like Home Depot and Lowe's mm -hmm. at Christmas time because they sell them in small pots as small Christmas trees. And you can go ahead and plant them outside. I recognize this variety for that very reason, and it looks beautiful with this pencil plant. Pencil plant looks like some kind of sedge or something. That blue green. You've got a colancoa or a colancho, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, love this. Love the way you've got it mulched with these big stones. If you don't want to have to bend over, you just use a plant stand. That's right. To hold your water bucket. And as we get older, we want to bend less and less. Yes, and you and I both have back issues. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely a way to protect your back, especially when it's full. It's light now, mm -hmm. not so much a problem, but it keeps you works. from, just, there you go. Wow. Boom. So there's just so, so many different things. Here's another great idea to steal. <laughs> She's got probably what was originally a letter basket. Mm -hmm. She's got it here with her gloves. I need to get you some cool job gloves. I love oh. them. I've been working with that company. Love their gloves. I will get you a pair. The texture of baskets. I have to, I have to look. Do you have anything <laughs> hidden in there? More there garden goes. tools. More garden surprise, tools. Surprise. Very clever storage. Ooh, I like this. And then the St. Francis. He was, um, when we lived in Shawnee, we wanted one of these St. Francis from Santa Fe. And so Bill called the artist, Ben Ortega, who's since passed away. He put it on a bus oh my and God. sent it to us wow. and said, then you can send me the money. Okay, that is, uh -huh. yes, that speaks to how much people trust Oklahomans. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things in your garden. 
Uh -huh. That is so dear. Do you ever get little wrens in there? Not yet. Not yet. We've seen some wrens around, so maybe. So maybe. And then your love of these uh -huh. peppers. Roger brought those last fall from Santa Fe. Santa Fe, yes. This is one of the things we, what are these called? Pe Ristas. Ristas. Ristas? Okay. Ristas. Okay, it always, that name always escapes me. This is one of those things people and from Oklahoma always pepper. pick up. Yes. And then the, you know, when it rains peppers. and it gets a little wet, you get that fresh chili Chili smell. smell. But anything that can remind us of Santa mm -hmm. Fe, right? And then you have autumnalized uh. <laughs> with some faux corn here. And is that, that looks that real. That is real corn, corn dryer. And all those uh, corns came from Taos, New Mexico. I want a corn dryer. Ah. Uh -huh. uh. What, okay, that's on my list of something to look for next time I go thrifting or estate sale shopping. And I may have to look for one of those on eBay because I adore that. A corn, dry, I, corn, a corn dryer. dryer. When I first had so it cool. or bought so it, cool. it was all blue corn. Oh, wow. The blue corn. And, but, Which would look know, incredible with your yes. blue. And, and, and let's point out some more of her love of blue here. You've got little marbles here. You've got more blue pottery. You've got blue pillows. You've got more touches of blue, which also kind of parodies the blue-gray that you've got in, in your garden in various different ways. Okay, here's another idea to steal. Are we on five, six? I don't know how many ideas we've got for you guys to steal out here. So probably the concrete was original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, then you and John and Roger extended it out here. No, it was here. Oh, this, this was, was here. here. And then John is really wanting us to dye this concrete. I, I think so too, yeah, so I can see that's that. That's in the future. That but he brilliantly took out some of these, because they're just soft set, some of these bricks along here and planted in the void two cross vines, one here and one here. And look at how well they're doing. They do beautiful. I mean, if you want cross vine, it uh, seeds and comes up everywhere. Which is both of a good thing and a bad it thing. It is a good Dep thing yeah, and a bad thing. Yeah, depending on where you want it. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, you said you had three or four Nellie we Stevens halls. four Nellie Stevens, two on each side of the statue and the bird bath. But that winter, they <sighs> all died, plus we had two or three over here. So we had to replace and since this magnolia was already here and doing so well, we just replaced the Nellie Stevens with these, which really gives us more room to plant in more, front. Yeah, more room to plant in the foreground. And also, was it espaliered when it was here, or did you do that yourselves? It was espaliered when we bought it, but we have had to train it because it's grown, grown considerably. considerably. Yes. Yeah. That's one thing. Espaliers are labor intensive. You yeah. do have to stay on top of them, but there would be no better spot for a highly intensive plant than in a small courtyard garden. And then, because uh -huh. you get some washout, yes, because of the elevation of the dirt, you have used lots of a very Oklahoma, yes. iconic Oklahoma thing, which we just went hunting yesterday. for some more yesterday. We have a little scout group. <laughs> of us, yes, that we go out and we scout for beautiful things in nature, and one of them are these fabulous rose rocks. And so you have just, those are just quintessentially yes. Oklahoma. They're very expensive, or can be They're very expensive. expensive if you buy them in a rock and gem store. But Roger, our friend's brother, lives in in Noble in Noble in Rose Rock Heaven. Yes, and another. Um, another columnar oak tree. I think it's an English oak. I could be wrong if I am. Someone out there will correct me. But I, I, I'm really developing an affection for columnar mm -hmm. trees. I, I just really love their profile. And then this is probably, before we finish this corner, a good place to kind of start ending. It's spring with a and wheat it harvest. Is spring. So we actually went front to back. We, we kind of went in the wrong order. We're ending okay. up with Spain, but that's okay. And it's nestled in another gorgeous holly with more evergreens over here, boxwood, more Indian hawthorn, 
and these beautiful yopons, which I do oh, love wow. yopons. Yo Talk again, another example of romancing the ordinary, the way they're limbed up. These are tough in Oklahoma, and they replaced two more of those. Yes. Those lost yes. Nellie Stevens. And our plan is hope is that they'll, these will grow together and more jasmine on the fence, so it'll be give us more privacy. privacy. And you'll feel completely like this is an intimate space. And then another fabulous yucca in a blue pot with some more ground covers, yaras, maybe some more of that Southern Living sedge over here. We've got some purple oxalis and some yarrow and then you and I were talking about this. I, I find this to be, I know in other places it grows like a weed, but this is a climbing hydrangea. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've tried multiple times. I've never been able to get it established. I just didn't have the right micro environment. Does it bloom? Oh yeah, oh, it will bloom beautifully. Here. Yeah, well maybe it's just, it just has, is a question it of, needs to mature of maturity. More. So this is just an example of how much art personality, signature touches, um, geographical references that you just love so much that you can fit into a small courtyard garden and you have done it brilliantly, Thank Miss you. Maximalista, <laughs> Maximalista. And again, I, I just want to emphasize if, if maximalist isn't your style, you could do the Simple. same thing in a minimalist way, but it gives you the luxury of being able to grow more high maintenance plants, sometimes more interesting plants because you are not being a slave to the lawnmower, to watering, to things like that because you don't have lawn and you don't have a bunch of just common shrubs. It's absolutely brilliant. So, signing off from Janie Dupree, my buddy. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. Thank you. And Stuart, it's good to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you've held on this long, here is your outfit of the day. I will start, and then Good. Janie, you can finish. So my earrings are some cactus. Don't you probably love oh, these? Yeah. Don't you? I got these in Santa Fe uh -huh. many, many, many years ago. We both are Santa Fe lovers, as you've already heard by now. My top was actually thrifted, and uh -huh. I got this at uh, I can't remember, but it was a thrift store in Salida, Colorado. My britches are some of those Banana Republic jeans I just got on sale. They were a hundred and twenty dollars. Jeannie and I Ooh. got them on sale for I think $19.99 oh just this Look week and my boots. shoes uh, booties are forever 21 and then you guys have seen an assortment of all of my bracelets before I actually made this one this I got at a wonderful store in Salida Colorado called currents this came from my friend Deborah you may know Deborah Mitchell this was a gift I think she got that at BC Clark's I always and, wonder how she remembers oh, it. well because they all have meaning <laughs> to me they all have meaning to me and this I don't know where I got that I've just had that forever and I got this as a gift Great. from my husband years ago Oh, okay, so take it away, Janie. All right. Well, we're glad to have you here this morning. It's a beautiful fall morning and couldn't be better after this summer. And we are dressed appropriately. So yes. where'd you get these sweet sterling earrings? You know, I probably picked them up at J.C. Penney's. Okay, J. good C. Penney's. to know. Yes. And this wonderful Johnny. Oh, I have Johnny. to show you the back. Oh, the, oh look at this back. shirt. Isn't this cute? Uh -huh. It looks like a Johnny was, was uh, it's embroidered a shirt. But it's a yes, copy and it's great. It's a copy, yes. And of course, everything looks cute on yours because you're you. so tiny. Thank you. And your jeans, do you remember? My remember? jeans, you know, they probably came from Macy's. And my shoes are some that my daughter got me. You know, she likes to keep me in the latest of style. Well, th th there we go. We have mm -hmm. to be stylish at yes. any age. So there you go. There is your outfit.